There are so many factors that make Smash the game that it is. Perhaps most significantly, Smash has a deep and sophisticated physics system that allows every character to move differently, while still feeling like part of the same game. In this video, we're going to break down the physics of Smash to take a look at what really makes every character unique, and yet the same. If you want to learn all you can about Smash, be sure to check out ProGuys.com for all kinds of competitive content, including our Play With Pros platform that gives you access to top coaches in the game of your choice. We also just launched our new pro course with none other than MK Leo himself, the best in the world. Click the link in the description to check out our website and watch the course. Now, on with the video. Probably the first aspect of physics you'll encounter when playing Smash is ground speed. Every character has their own speed values for ground movement, and this is broken down into three types, walking, initial dash, and running. Your walking speed can be variably controlled based on how far you tilt the stick, but every character has their own max walk speed. Marth and Lucina are tied for the fastest walkers in the game, followed by Fox and Greninja. Initial dash is the window you enter before running, which becomes a foxtrot if you don't keep holding the stick to run. Initial dash speeds are usually similar to their corresponding run speeds for each character, but this isn't always the case. For example, Wolf's initial dash is significantly faster than his run speed. Zero Suit Samus has the fastest initial dash, closely followed by Little Mac and Sonic. Run speed itself is pretty self-explanatory. Once you complete the initial dash, you enter your full run and your character's run speed determines how quickly you move here. Sonic is by far the fastest runner in the game, unless you count Hero with Accelerato, followed by Captain Falcon and Little Mac. A fast run speed is beneficial for a character to quickly traverse the stage, but as evidenced by the top three fastest, this value doesn't directly correlate with the character's competitive viability. Ground speed naturally determines each character's movement on the ground. And now, we have the values that determine a character's aerial mobility. Air speed is the simplest and most straightforward. Similar to run speed, air speed determines a character's max speed when drifting horizontally through the air. The fastest air speed and ultimate goes to Yoshi, followed by Jigglypuff and Mewtwo. Though of course, Hero with Accelerato is even faster, and so is Shulk in jump mode. Characters don't instantly reach their max air speed as soon as they leave the ground. However, this is where air acceleration comes into play. As the name suggests, this value is the rate at which a character gains speed in the air, or how quickly they reach their top speed. Like with initial dash, fast accelerations tend to accompany fast air speeds, but this isn't always the case. For example, Roy and Chrome have a top 5 air speed, but very low acceleration, which is why these characters can take forever to slow down in the air. The fastest air accelerators are Jigglypuff, Wario, and Peach. Air speed and acceleration are specifically dealing with horizontal aerial mobility, but we have two important values that cover vertical mobility as well. Firstly, fall speed determines the maximum rate of how quickly a character can descend, and this is also broken down into two types, fall speed and fast fall speed. As you'd expect, fall speed deals with average descension and fast fall speed with fast fall descension. As a trend with values like this in Smash, there's usually a correlation between a character's fast fall speed and normal fall speed, but there are some exceptions. For example, Link ranks around the middle for regular fall speed, but has a top 5 fast fall speed. The top 3 fastest fallers for both types are Fox, Little Mac, and King Day to Day. Faster fall speeds help a character survive vertical knockback longer, but also make them more susceptible to some combos. Finally, gravity is one of the least noticed yet still very relevant factors in air mobility. Gravity can be looked at as something similar to a vertical acceleration value. It determines how quickly you reach your max fall speed and how quickly you lose upwards momentum from jumping. Even with a fast fall speed, a lower gravity can make a character feel floaty. For example, Little Mac has the second fastest fall speed in the game, but gravity ranking in the middle of the cast, making him feel extra floaty relative to his fall speed. Fox has the highest gravity, followed by Mii Brawler and Greninja. Gravity also slightly factors into knockback, with higher gravities increasing knockback from 0 to 69 degrees and 111 to 180 degrees. Speaking of knockback, weight is one of the biggest factors that determines how far a character is launched. The heavier the character, the less knockback they will receive. Bowser reigns as the king of the heavyweights, followed by King K. Rool and a tie between Donkey Kong and Day to Day. 
Each character also has their own jump height for their short hop, full hop, and double jumps independently. Falco has the highest full hop, just above Greninja and Zero Suit, whereas Mewtwo has the highest double jump, followed by Yoshi and Falco again. In terms of short hops, it's generally more advantageous to have a lower height, and the lower short hop goes to Jigglypuff, followed by Mega Man and a tie between Ganondorf and Kirby. Technically though, Peach and Daisy can just float very low to get the same benefits in this regard. And there you have it, the core physics factors that contribute to how a character feels and plays in Smash. If you'd like to learn even more, be sure to subscribe to ProGuides and click that bell to stay up to date on all of our daily competitive content.